Hey, how's everybody this morning? I'm sorry I had to adjust this thing a little bit. Uh, yeah, today we'll have some stories. Here, hold on, I got a kind of a triangly looking joint. What happened was I had three joints rolled and I didn't feel like rolling another great big one, so I just rolled the three together and we'll see if that works. How she burns, we'll see. So let's roll. Buckle up, boys, I'm driving. Today we're going to start a story with the cops in the States. At one time I used to go back and forth across the border freely. It was fucking crazy. But anyways, I was down there one time and I had to gotten some legal difficulties and I uh, had to trade my van in for the car lot to get some money in another vehicle. Well, I just happened to get, I don't know if anybody out there even remember, but a 1970 Dodge Polara. Well... I got it home to my uncle's place there and popped the hood and he said, Jesus Christ, he says, you got a state patrol interceptor, the 440 Magnum in it. Like, holy fuck, man. Anyways, powerful car. Powerful, powerful car. Anyways, uh, I guess they haven't had a car that powerful as a police car since, I think, this year or last year. Dodge finally brought out one with enough power as that. Anyways, um... I was in Gig Harbor outside Tacoma one night and I was driving my aunt had a 68 Dodge Dart with this little slant six in it. I guess I was speeding me and a buddy and a couple of girls. I think I was 18 at the time. And uh, got pulled over by these cops. An old and young cop as usual, right? I guess I was doing 84 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. <laughs> Anyways, um, he, uh, officer, the old officer had me in his car and he says, look, because I produced my Alberta driver's license to him, and I'll, I'll tell you that about that in a minute. Anyways, uh, he says, usually guys like you, we just throw you right in fucking jail, right? And I'm like, oh, yay, fucking this sounds like fun. He says, but I'll tell you what he says I'll do. He says, you're fine now is 170 some fucking dollars or something, he said, but. I'll just put it down at 60 plus and it won't be as bad. It will be half of that if you pour your beer out. <laughs> no fucking problem, buddy. <laughs> you can give me all the things you want. I'll never pay him in the States. What the fuck? And pour the beer out? Sure. <laughs> Next 7 Eleven, I'll buy some more. <laughs> anyway, at 440 one night, we were on the freeway. Fucking middle of the night. Me and Buddy drunk. Buddy passed out in the back seat. Anyways, I guess what happened is uh, I must have passed out. Because we woke up in the morning. Some guy was banging on the window of my fucking car. And I sat up and looked. And we're in the fucking grass between the two fucking lanes of the freeway. Dead. Car was out of gas. I guess I passed out running out of gas. rolled down there in the grass. Well, and I sit up and looked across from me. First thing my eyes laid on was a tombstone. There's a whole graveyard there. I don't know if that was a sign or not, folks. <laughs> Anyways, about my Alberta driver's license I had. Um, my grandma, let's say she was a little on the eccentric side. Well, in the 30s during Prohibition, she worked for probably at that time the biggest brewery in Canada in Vancouver. They had their own fucking resort and thing, and it was only about 10 miles across the bay in Washington State. So, you know, it was the one over there, and uh, she did the books, and I seen the books, all the ones the government didn't see, put it that way. Hmm. Three joints burns pretty good. Anyway, I showed up at her place one time, I guess that had just come out of Alberta. And I had this learner's license, a plastic card with your picture and all that shit, and paper, cardboard on the back with all the details. And I don't know how my granny did it, but she got rid of that Class 7, and the Class 5 appeared. Anyways, that's in the old days before computers, you could do that stuff. She's dead now, so they can't do fuck all about that fucking shit. Well, anyways, and I, I, there's more stories to that fucking license, too, anyways. And, uh... The last story. 
the night I had to pull a knife on my son. Motherfucker. I, uh, broke top my leg bone off about 12 years ago or something at work. I'd been about a week or so at home, and of course I was using a wheelchair and a fucking walker like I was fucked up. But the first thing I got did when I got home, because I couldn't wear jeans and a belt, I had to wear fucking jogging pants or something. I, I strapped a knife to the front of my walker. <laughs> Good thing, too. Anyways, one night my fucking son Willie come home all fucking pissed drunk with some girl. Well, you don't do that in our fucking house, right? Pissed drunk, I don't care. You don't bring girls there, right? Mama don't like that. So mama got up and told him to get the fucking girl on the road, right? Well, he was drunk, so he proceeded he was going to raise some shit because the fucking old man's too fucked up to do anything about it, right? So he starts punching holes in the wall. Well, of course, I get the fuck up out of bed to the commotion and grab a walker, and I'm fucking heading down the way hallway with a walker. Well, that stupid cocksucker looks at me and gets ready, starts running, running to tackle me. I pulled my knife right out and said, go ahead, motherfucker, go fucking right ahead. <sighs> fucking kids, eh? What are you going to do? Broke my heart to do it, but on the other hand, ain't nobody gonna fuck me up, man. You ain't fucking me up, boy. I don't really fucking care. Right or wrong, that's just what happened. I loved the boy to death. I'd fucking take a boat, die for him at any fucking time, but I ain't gonna let him fuck me up. Anyways, that's a little too serious, boys. And I hope everybody has a kick ass day and 